morning, gang. Welcome along to the Chapel Hill Marina on Wednesday, the 14th of August 2019. Welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk. I've got to tell you, I had real trouble getting going this morning. Um, I, I didn't sleep too well. And I think I didn't have two reasons I didn't sleep too well. My money's on Coca-Cola. My money's on the Coca-Cola because last night I went over to see my nephew and uh, his two children. And we were just sitting there. We were watching some videos and uh, uh, great nephew Harry, we were watching. He chooses the videos with Evie. And we were watching. He likes watching dropping videos. Last week it was farting videos. We've done that now. This week we're watching dropping videos. And there's these people all over the place. In particular, three, I think it's three or four lads who are in, sort of in their 30s, uh, 25 to 35 sort of age range, who go up tall structures and literally drop things, various different things. One of which was a fridge freezer <laughs> and onto a trampoline. That, that's what they do. So we're watching that last night. And for some reason, uh, I mentioned Burger King. And it was, I, I noticed Bur Burger King are now doing some vegetarian options or vegan options. I can't remember which it was now. Uh, and uh, my nephew's wife's ears pricked up immediately. Ding! Did you say Burger King? Oh, I haven't had one of those for ages. I said, neither have I. You know, actually, for years. I don't think I've been in Burger King for years. And she says uh, to my nephew, oh, Gary, go and get some Burger King. So it was about, it was about a quarter to... It was about a quarter to eight at night now. I hadn't had like, I hadn't had dinner either. I was going to have my dinner when I come round. Uh, sorry, when I got back here because I'd had a very late lunch yesterday. Um, everything went. I'll, I'll tell you about my day in a minute, but uh, it, it wasn't wasn't quite as I planned it yesterday. Um, and uh, uh, so the, the conversation's going back and forth. Oh, go on, Gary, go there for me. And I thought, well, it might be a nice, nice little outing. So eventually uh, we looked it up on the thing. The Burger Kings out here, they close at nine o'clock. <laughs> How weird is that? They actually close at nine o'clock at night. So we looked it up and the nearest one is about a 40 minute drive away. It's the only thing with being out here in Lincolnshire, you know, unless you're in a town. Same in London. Now, if, if you, unless you're in a town, you can't walk to these places. You know, I just pop out for a Burger King, you know, 10 minutes down the road, you arrive at one or a McDonald's, or a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Or There's none of that. None of that here. Certainly not where I am. You may remember I told you last week, what, I love where I am here, in this caravan here, in the middle of nowhere. But you can't actually walk anywhere. You can go for a walk, but you can't walk directly to a shop. If I walk to a shop, that's about a two-hour walk from here. Yeah. You know, a half hour in the car. You know, it's impossible. So uh, eventually we decided to go, and we're looking at the time, and it's now a quarter past eight. So we've got to get a move on. So we've all got in the car. Uh, not not my nephew's wife. There was me, my nephew driving the, he calls it the fun bus. They've got a, like a, a disabled type bus. or, or a, Sorry, a um, it's a bit like a, a large, What I don't know what they're called. You know the transit, a, a minibus. It's like a minibus. Okay, with one, two, three, there's four, I think five seats in it. And in the middle... It's uh, uh, empty there so that she can push the uh, wheelchair type thing, pram disabled type thing into the middle of it. And you kind of lock it down with these clips that go on there. Right. You know, so you push up. Anyway, so there was me, uh, my nephew, uh, great nephew, Harry and great niece, Evie. And off we go in the fun bus, which we always see singing things like uh, Sweet Caroline. They like that one. Singing that in the car, in, in the van. Sweet Caroline. And Evie, one of Eve, Evie's favourite songs, I don't know if you're going to know this, is called Shine Jesus Shine. It's like a modern hymn. Shine Jesus Shine. Shine in the dark. Shine in the sweetness. That one. Dun, dun, dun. And we've got a version of that, that Songs of Praise did at the Royal Albert Hall, which is all instruments and all bangs and claps and things like that. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, maybe there's hope. Maybe I'll, eventually I'll be able to take someone else to church for me. I'm the only one that goes now. Does anyone go? No, I didn't think so. Never mind. Anyway, so we got to the Burger King and uh, went in there with about 10 minutes to spare. I think we got we got there in plenty of time. And I had a halloumi burger. They had double halloumi burgers. £5.50. I thought that was a bit pricey, isn't it? £5.50 for, for a burger. 
Cool, dear me. Anyway, so I had a, a single halloumi burger because I wouldn't pay the 550. I'm sorry. It's too much to pay for a burger. Not when you can go down the trawler's catch in Skegness and have a great big plate of chips and baked beans for like two and a half quid. 550 for a halloumi burger. So I had that. And it was very nice. I'll be honest. It was very nice. The chips in there, well, I don't, they're not real chips, are they? They're just, they're just not chip shop chips. There's a huge difference between having proper chip shop chips in a chip shop like what you get in Skegness than whether you go in McDonald's or Burger King or something like that. Completely different. I'm sorry, they are. So they were OK. And uh, but then I had a Coke. Now, I don't normally have a Coke. Very, very rare. But I had this Coke. And so we're now in this in the, in the little van and we've eaten our food and then we drove back and uh, uh, back to the um, back to Gary's house. We got back there around right about quarter to ten, ten to ten, something like that. And the children, they, they they wanted me to come back in again for a while. So I did. But they very, very quickly fell asleep anyway. So, I <laughs> so we gave Stacey hers. And that was it. Then I came back here to the caravan. And um, I watched Holby City last night. And there was a very funny line in it, which I, I was desperately searching around for a pen and a piece of paper to write it down. But I couldn't find it. Uh, so I watched Holby City. Oh, yeah, hang on. It was something that Jack Naylor said in Holby City. Uh, who's, like, in charge of it. Oh, I can't remember. She said something to, to uh, please. Oh, I can't remember now. Anyway, so uh, watched that. Uh, had a cup of tea. And then I went to bed. And it was cold last night. The 14th of August. And some of the temperatures across the country were, like, four degrees last night. In August, I put the heating on. I'm sorry, I put my... It was the first first chance I got to properly test the heating. So I put the heating on in the living room. It comes out of the air conditioning. It doesn't come on instantly. If you've got one of the air conditioning, combined air conditioning heating units, if you've had it on one or the other, when you put it on the other, so, for example, it had been on cold air during a day, put it on air, then it's not instant. It takes about three or four minutes to do something. I don't know what happens. I think the cold fluid stuff comes out of the thing and has to get stored somewhere and then the heat comes on and i was asking my brother-in-law how this works he said well you know you go out you know the big fan you've got outside when you've got air conditioning if, if you've got the two splits you know you've got one in the house and the big fan outside right if you go out there when it's really hot and you've got the air conditioning on you stand by the fan and it blasts out hot air and I was asking my brother-in-law, he understands all these things. Anything technical, you just ask him. Um, he was saying, well, it works in reverse. If you go out and stand by that fan, when you've got the heating on, it would be blowing out cold air. And I thought, oh, I wonder. So I put it on, I waited for the heat to come out of it. Then I went outside to the fan. And sure enough, it blows out cold air. Isn't that strange and mysterious? That's how it works, apparently. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. And it was fantastic. The heat's coming out there. And the one in the bedroom. I've put the one in the bedroom on as well. And the heat's coming out there. I left the door open. And um, I went to bed. And I, I had trouble getting off to sleep. Uh, eventually I got off to sleep. And I woke up again. It was probably about four o'clock in the morning I woke up again. And I just couldn't get back to sleep. Two reasons, I think. I think it was probably the Coca-Cola. Because I this has happened before. When I've drunk Coca-Cola sort of within a couple of hours of going to bed, maybe down the pub, you know, and then I go to bed and I can't get to sleep. Although I did get to sleep, but apart from that, I woke up, oh my God, it was so hot. And I looked over at the thermometer, 78 degrees Fahrenheit in the bedroom. <laughs> I, had, I had it set on 20 on the thing, so I don't know how it got to, uh, sorry, 20 centigrade. So that's, uh, it had got to 24 Oh, yeah, that would be about right, wouldn't it? Hang on a minute, because I've... I mean, foolishly, for some strange unbeknown reason, the um, the temperature on the remote control thing for the aircon heating is in centigrade. And on my little... I've got a little thermometer. I like gadgets, you know. I've got one of those in-out thermometers. And they, they come with a little probe, don't they? You hang one bit out the window or, or somewhere, out of the little hole, and you have the other bit inside... And and it's and that for some reason is in Fahrenheit. Maybe I should set them to the same thing, then I won't get confused. <laughs> I was so hot, so hot outside. I think it said 
57 degrees and inside it was like 78. So it's definitely working well. So that was quite nice. But I had trouble sleeping, uh, which meant when I got up in the morning, the alarm went off at about a quarter to eight. I had real trouble getting on the move today. But we got there and we've had breakfast and we've had a cup of tea and we're here sitting having a little chat. All right, so good morning to you. We've got more raffle tickets to give out later, gang. Okay, more raffle tickets. Don't forget, we got the raffle every Monday. If you want to go in for the raffle, you'll need a raffle ticket. If you're watching live, then ask for a raffle ticket when I say time to ask for a raffle ticket. Not yet, because we'll do a bit of show first. Uh, if you're watching a recording of the show, that doesn't matter because you can... Oh, I haven't got one set on here. You can email the show, okay? You can email the show after after the show is finished, right up to the next show, to when the next show starts. The only thing is I haven't got a caption with my email on this one, so I'll just have to read it out to you because I've forgotten to do that, all right? I can't remember everything, dear. Okay, right, let's leave some of your, read some of your messages coming through this morning. Uh, good morning to John Aitken. Good morning, John. Morning to you, sir. All right, hello to Mike Reese ponto Good morning, Mike. Weird City Citizen over there on YouTube. Sir Reardon of Royal Berkshire today in Lincolnshire. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning to the lovely Ray Reynolds. Now, Ray bought me some badges. Ray and I and other people are into television things. We're into uh, nostalgic television. And Ray, on Monday, is always bringing me in little presents. Uh, he's he's one, the guy who plays the um, uh, ukulele. There's him and Johnny. I think Johnny was here this week, wasn't he? Yeah, Johnny was definitely there. Yeah, and they sung uh, When by the Kaylin Twins on Monday, and he bought me in these little badges. Look, can you see? Old television things. And we were, we're both of us are very sad with all this stuff, but there's a lot of us <coughs> who like this sort of thing. And I'm wearing one today. This is the old London Weekend television logo. You know, I always wanted a job at these places, being the bloke in between, like Tom Edwards does. And uh, Philip Ellsmore, people like that. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a television announcer. But unfortunately, those jobs uh, were replaced by faceless logos and things like that. So that didn't happen. Uh, hello to uh, Diane. Je Thank you, Ray, for that very much. So, or wear one each day, dear. Thank you. Uh, good morning to Diane. Jeb. Morning, Diane. Hello to Tim Partington. Just watched a trailer for the new movie, Last Christmas. Oh, that's got to be George. Oh, hang on. Which is out in November. And as you might have guessed, yes, it features the music of George Michael and a new unheard song, too. It looks interesting. Uh, yes, I mean, that was a great shock, wasn't it? I shall never forget that. I'd had a very good Christmas um, at my sister's house. And uh, I was I was hiring a caravan on a place called Tattershaw Lakes, uh, which is just enormous, really. Uh, uh, but on Christmas, there wasn't too many of us on the, on the site. And um, I, I got back to the caravan and I was kind of making a recorded video. And while I'm making this video, this little thing. You know how you can have the news flash up on your phone if you've got a, like a, uh, you know, BBC News. And so you can be doing something and, and, and it, it plays the news jingle. Boom, boom, that one. And a bit of news flashes up. Well, so I'm recording this show and this news flashed up. George Michael has died or has been found dead. And I was just absolutely gobsmacked. I'm like, what? It had been such a good day. And then suddenly you were like someone who's George, George Michael had died. And that kind of hit hit home, hit, hit a bit home to me. And that was a, an enormously sad uh, end to what had been a really good Christmas for me. Anyway, it looks like he's going to have a, a, a film come out about his life and that. We've had Elton John. I didn't manage to see that, unfortunately. I guess I'm just going to have to wait for it to be on uh, Netflix or something like that. Um, I saw uh, the I saw the Freddie Mercury one, which I thought was absolutely amazing. Saw that. I'm sure maybe you saw it as well. I think it was was it called Bohemian Rhapsody? I think it might have done. So that's uh, that's another one coming out around uh, November. The music of George Michael. I hope they do Careless Whisper. That's I love that song. I've got the 12 inch mega mix of that. It's wonderful. A lot of saxophone in it. It's actually quite a difficult song to sing, that one. Morning to Christina Ewing. Good morning. Uh, Mike says, are you on the new router this morning? Yes, Mike, I am. I am. Uh, it was, I, I got in on uh, Tuesday morning. <coughs> Very early Tuesday morning. The journey to uh, karaoke on Monday was incredibly quick this week. One hour and 25 minutes. 
it do you know it makes such a difference when we have the school holidays it's not the fact and i was you know i've always thought to myself what difference can it make that the fact that the children are not at school how can the roads be so empty and the reason of course is it's not just them who take the holiday the parents of those children then take the holiday and off they fly to little places and have their little holidays or in their car onto uh, a staycation here in the UK somewhere. And um, so a lot of cars are not on the road. And Monday, instead of taking the usual two hours to get to work, one hour and 25 minutes. Unbelievable. The only real traffic was along that damn Euston Road where that was as solid as it is usually. You know, so you're inching along. But I didn't have to queue anywhere else, not at the end of the motorway or leaving Bracknell or anywhere. Amazing, really. So that was it. Um, the karaoke was quite nice on Monday. Uh, Mary turned up, non-Irish Mary from Ireland. And we did uh, uh, the Grease Mega Mix. So that was very nice. Uh, got up here at about 1.40am in the morning. Uh, again, a nice easy journey up here. The A1M was open right the way through, so that, that was no problem. Uh, and uh, I thought when I got here, I thought I'd do something to eat. I didn't, I didn't stop for a sandwich or anything. I do something to eat. I think I did baked beans and um, oh, what did I do? I can't. Remember. I can't remember actually. Baked beans and maybe a couple of veggie burgers or something like that before I went to sleep. And uh, I got, you know, I unpack my bags because I don't have a washing machine here or anything like that. So I take my washing home, do my washing, and then bring it back up here on the Tuesday morning. So uh, I'm unpacking my bags and bits and pieces like that, and I've got the router out, the brand new router. Because, as you know, we've been having internet, a lot of internet problems here up here at the caravan. Uh, Mike Reese ponto is just asking that question there. Did a bit of a search on the internet, and it appears that the Huawei router that three have provided is giving a lot of people problems. They're waiting for an update, which, quote, will be with you in a few weeks. Well, that's no good to me. You know, so I, I saw and, and other people have bought a different manufacturing router, put it in, and it's worked for them. So that's what I've tried, Okay. So I got this brand new router out, put it put it on the side, and I thought, I'll do that tomorrow morning. Anyway, so I'm eating my dinner, I've had my dinner, and now uh, I'm drinking tea, and I'm looking at this router, I'm thinking, oh, you know, do you really want to start that now? Because if you get into any problems, so it's now 2.15 in the morning, right? If you get into any problems, I don't know if you're the same as me, but I can't give it up until the problem's sorted. Whether that be 11 in the morning, or two in the afternoon, you know? And I thought, oh, I mean, how hard, hard, I'd already read the instructions, and I'd already read the reviews, and most people on there, there was a couple of, you know, one star reviews where people couldn't get it going, but generally, the, the, the vast majority of the reviews were, it's really quick to set up, and I, I knew what to do, because I've already read the instructions, I thought, sod it, I'll do it now. So I've gone to the old router, unplugged the power, unplugged my um, Ethernet cable from the broadcast computer, right? Took the little card out. I've got to put the card in the, the slot in the in the new router, and it's too big. So you have, the, you know those little SIM cards? They're like three different sizes, aren't they? There's the very small one, the, the one in the middle, and the large one. But if you, they all come as a larger one, I think, and you have to break off the bit of plastic around the side. It's like, uh, what's the word, serrated. So, you know, you don't need scissors. You just literally snap it off. So I snapped off this and I pushed it in the router. I took the router over position, plugged in, switched on. All these lights started whirring about. And then on came the internet light. On came the Wi-Fi light. I thought, wow, is this going to work? So I then got my uh, iPhone, right? switched on the wi-fi on that and then it says what you know what wi-fi do you want so i looked for tp link router clicked on that i had the password there which was just a string of letters and numbers typed all that in you know abc one two three seven eight nine that business clicked duh, 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 joined right let's try it and it worked so quick i i, I tell you five minutes five minutes to set up that router it was so easy remember it's a 4g router okay there's no cable coming in from a, a broadband company it all works over the phone network for so we're on that brand new router now i did a speed test and it is slightly it appears to be slightly faster 
uh, than the other router. It is in an odd position in the caravan, I'll tell you that uh, for nothing. Um, I have tried various different positions in the caravan, both with my phone and the old router. And the best position for it is directly in front of a mirror. OK, so then I put these two screws in there. Well, uh, two screws. So you hook it on with these two screws. There's actually four holes, though, because the first oh, I don't know how that works. Please don't ask me to come round to your house and do DIY. Right. I put these two holes in the two screws. Of course, it wouldn't go on, would it? The two, this one was too far apart. So I started gently because you don't want to wake the neighbours with a hammer knocking it. Now, that doesn't work. So I had to move it slightly along a bit, but you can't see it. I showed my mate a picture of it. He said, that looks dreadful. I said, well, that's the best place for it. And it's got these two odd looking aerials. He's got two aerials sticking up. So, yes, we're on the new router. Um, will it work? I won't know that until we've done a few shows. I won't know that. So this is the first show on the new router. OK, thank you for asking. And there we are. Really? In the morning, uh, that was yesterday morning. I There are various other things connected to this router, you see. The television, OK, so I can use iPlayer. Type that, ask for the thing, did the same thing, type the number in. Worked perfectly, very quick. I've got a couple of smart plugs in here, which I turn lights on, on and off uh, from... Uh, remotely, you know, from wherever I am in the country or indeed the world, you can turn the lights on and off. Connected those to the thing, no problem whatsoever. But when it came to the Wi-Fi for the air conditioning heating, which I like to be able to turn on anywhere, that was a different thing altogether. Oh my God. I started it at nine o'clock. This is why you didn't get me yesterday morning. I started at nine o'clock in the morning and it took me until one o'clock to get the bloody thing going. Oh my God. Oh, my God. You see, eventually I rang up my, um, the bloke who installed the air conditioning. It's got the instructions, and I, f this is what I don't understand. It's got a little book, and then the instructions are not in the book. You then have to go online and look for the instructions. So I did, and I followed them to the letter very, very carefully, and I couldn't get the thing to go in. Basically, the remote control thing for the um, air conditioning, it's got a little light on it, and it flashes different colours depending at what stage of the installation you're on. And I could only get it as far as flashing green. And it should go out, you see, completely. Then it's ready. Flashing green, and I've gone through it. Oh, it must have been six or seven times I've gone through this damn thing. Really dreadful. Eventually, I rung up my installer. He said, I'll, I'll ring you back in 45 minutes. Eventually, it was about an hour and a half. But nevertheless, he rung back, you know. And I don't know about you, when people say, I'll ring you back, I'm very dubious about that. I don't think banks, councils, no one ever rings you back, do they? Not even the doctor. No one rings you back. He did. He rang me back after about an hour and a half and he talked me through basically instructions that I'd followed. But when he would talk to me on the phone, it worked. How's that? How's that happened then? Oh, but of course he's done it before. So perhaps that's why. But I'm sure... I did exactly the same as he did, in exactly the same order. But nevertheless, it's working now. Then it got to one o'clock, you see. So I didn't have time to go swimming. I'd missed the swimming. And my niece is over from Cyprus now. I wanted to go and see her and the children. So uh, that's what happened yesterday afternoon, you know. And I drove down to my sister's house. Um, they were waiting outside. Went over to my niece's. She's doing a little bit of work while she's here. She's a professional hairdresser, my niece. And uh, the two children, um, uh, three children, I beg your pardon, there's George uh, George and uh, Emily and uh, James, who is he's, he's just James, he's not baby James anymore. He can talk now, he can talk now. He gives you things, you know, and you have to teach him the word. One of the words I taught him yesterday was umbrella, which he said very well, I have to say. Umbrella, and he runs about the place, so that was nice. That was nice. Then we went to the baker's. And uh, I had a, a, a cheese salad roll I asked for in the baker's. Cheese salad roll. And they had this thing called a tiffin. Do you know what tiffin is? Caramel tiffin. I thought, well, that looks nice. I wonder what's in it. It just looked like a pastry type thing. So I had that uh, in a little bag. Walked back to my sister's house. I had the, the roll on the way back. And then I had this tiffin when, uh, with a cup of tea when we were there. Oh, it was vile. Horrible stuff. Won't be having one of those again. I think that's a posh thing, is it, Tiffin? Is that something you get in a posh hotel or something like that? <laughs> Didn't like that at all, I'm afraid. No, no Tiffin for Chris, please. Thank you very much. Not anymore. And that was it. I got back here, hoping to be back here about three o'clock for a sleep.
But I didn't get back until quarter past five, and I was so tired. And uh, really, you know, I should make sure that I can be back in places on time. Otherwise, it mucks me up. It may well be uh, why I couldn't sleep properly last night as well. So uh, that was my day yesterday. Uh, hello to Rachel. Good evening, Rachel Wetland. Good news. She's received her fridge magnet and photo. Excellent, Rachel. Excellent, my dear. You can win a fridge magnet as well. Oh, I haven't got any with me. I didn't bring any fridge magnets up here, but we are giving away fridge magnets at the moment. OK, uh, not available to anyone who just simply says, can I have one? No, you need a raffle ticket. and We have a raffle every Monday morning on this programme. In a moment, I'll, I'll, let, I'll, I'll say to you, OK, who wants a raffle ticket? And then just ask for one. And while we're live on the show, I will give you your raffle number. You can have one every day, but no more than one. If I catch you cheating and trying to get two, I'll remove all your tickets from the thing and you'll be banned from the from the raffle because it has to be fair for everyone. All right. And don't be setting up a YouTube account and a Facebook account as well. I know that one. Don't think you're doing something that no one else has tried before. OK. <laughs> hello to Michael Lawrence. Good morning to you. Uh, Maria. Hello, Maria. Welcome along to Maria Lilibeth uh, Bermat. New person. Morning, Maria. Maria, I just met a girl called Maria. La, 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 la. You'll find, Maria, one of the features of this program is that I do sing to you occasionally. And it's a personal thing. I'm personally singing to you, my dear. All right. Uh, good morning to LaBelle over there in New York. My emerald-eyed magician of love. We love the love train. Do you remember the love train? Anyone remember that? Oh, no, was the so no, it was the soul train, wasn't it? The soul train. Uh, now, who did that? It was the bloke from Shalimar, wasn't it? On, it used to be on Channel 4 over here in the UK. All soul music. I used to like that. Yes, please feel free to share the show on your walls and friends' walls and messenger and everywhere in the world. Please, we're desperate for more viewers, dear. Desperate. Uh, and I've got a YouTube channel as well, which is showing the same at the same time, exactly the same program as you're watching on YouTube. I'd appreciate a little subscribe on there. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. My YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right. Uh, good morning to Janet Savage, another new person there sending love hearts. Good morning, Janet. Welcome to the show, my darling. It's nice to see you all talking to each other. Um... Yes, Tim, and about a month later, The Voice of Radio 1 with Tony Blackburn. He was on talk radio the other day doing uh, uh, doing a little bit of a chat with, um, oh, the bloke in the morning, James Max, wasn't he? Tony, oh, Tony Blackburn, he loves getting up early. He gets up, I think he must get up about five o'clock in the morning, Tony Blackburn. He likes early mornings there, doesn't he? All right, um... <clears throat> There we are. Uh, LaBelle, that's because those are chips and not fries. Yeah, chips are much better than fries, LaBelle. Have you had a proper bag of chips? Ch oh, no. I, yeah, sorry. I see what you mean. LaBelle, uh, our chips are not potato chips. If you see, I know what you mean. When you say chips, you mean crisps. Crisps are like things in a packet, like a plastic packet, right? Chips to us are cut up bits of potato fried. Like fries, but fatter. I know what you mean. In America, chips are basically fries. You can't get any normal chips in America. I've never found any. Chips are fries, uh, but their chips are crisps. Very confusing. It's very confusing. Um, all right, Janet's, Janet's there. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Good morning, Adam. Another wet day. Only 18 degrees. Yeah, not a particularly good summer's day, is it, today? Morning to Ray Belasco. Good morning, lovely Ray. I, I didn't know Ray actually run with one of those um, things for the Olympics. Do you know, that must be seven years ago now, the London Olympics. Do you remember that? Wow, that was fantastic, wasn't it? I remember that. Oh, London's going to come to a standstill. You're not going to be able to get anywhere. Uh, when it actually happened, nothing could be further from the truth. I was doing a quiz at the time at a, place, a lovely little pub called the Mayflower which is uh, near, is it near, Berm near Bermondsey in Rotherhithe? Lovely little pub, right on the Thames it was. And I was doing a quiz there, and it used to be a nightmare to get to this place, even worse than it was getting, than it is getting to um, uh, Central Station on a Monday. Right? 
uh, but not to do any Olympics. Oh my God, it was so easy to get there. No one went on the roads. It was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Rachel says, listen to one of your shows, Chris. It makes you sleep. Oh, I can't listen to myself. Oh, that would do my head in. Morning to Peter Lake. Morning, Peter. He says it's cold in Woodall Spa, but it certainly is. Mike, short air conditioning is all to do with the gas in the pipes being compressed and turning to a liquid, then turning back to a gas. It's all very well saying that, Mike. I still haven't got a clue how it works. <laughs> John says George Michael was his idol. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, Ray, didn't you used to play that jingle at the Black Cat before the uh, axe came on? Yes, Ray, I did. It's one of them. I had two different types. There was that one. And the other one, which I don't have with me, I can't play to you again. But you're quite right. I used to use a small version of that before the cabaret came on. That's right. Uh, <coughs> Rocket Man is brilliant. I still haven't seen that, Adam the Plumber. Still not seen that. Good morning to Adrian Richardson. Good morning, Adrian. Morning. Ray is reporting no glitches yet. I don't like to say anything like that, Ray. You know that. Just in case. It, it, I think sometimes when you say something like, um, oh, it seems all right at the moment. And then that, that's like asking for trouble, so I'm not. There's probably someone sitting at the three mobile telephone network about to push a switch if I say something like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, good morning to Rude George. I heard you got... What is that? I'm going to look that up before I say that. What's, what's that? And I, let me just see what that... It's part of a spectrum... Loose internal gene myasinist. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Oh, it's a fictional disease involved in Fortnite stream. Isn't Fortnite a game? <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's. I'll see what this is. It's a, who is it? Rude George. Good morning, George. What is ligma? It's a fictional disease involved in Fortnite streamer ninjas death hoax. I've what? What on earth is that? For, is that a game, Fortnite? I think it's a game, isn't it? If, if, uh, Fortnite streamer Ninja's Death Hoax. I've no idea what that means. It's a fictional disease, but it's proved highly contagious across the internet with thousands now talking about it. What is Ligma? And that's the whole point of the pretty questionable joke because the answer is meant to be funny. Um, what, what is it then? It doesn't say... Uh, I, I don't know what it is. It doesn't really say. Not only is... Oh, it does say, not only is nif Ligma nothing to fear, but it can do plenty for the health of your internet following. Oh, I've got, I must have Ligma then. I must have Ligma. <laughs> internet comedian Supreme Patty posted this video of his own Ligma diagnosis, and at the time of writing, it's been viewed 3.1 million times. Is that right? Oh, I must have it then. We're desperate for get three point. Desperate to get one million or even a thousand. <laughs> I, I've definitely got that, Rude George. Thank you for pointing me out. Uh, our doctor this morning is Rude George. If you've got any diagnosis that you need, ask him. He'll, he'll be able to help you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, Adam's given instructions there. Thank you very much, Adam. I did give it instructions on how to put something up on the wall. When you put something up with what they call a keyhole fixing, which is what this router is, you've got two holes. You know, two holes that are like, they're like that. They've got a long bit, a little hole like that. Uh, place a piece of masking tape between the two holes and make a small incision to take the tape off. Place the gates wall, drill one hole, mark the other one, use the spirit level to make sure the sink... Oh, I can't be bothered with all that, Adam, dear. I just held the thing up about the wall and put the two holes in roughly where it was. Unfortunately, it didn't work. <laughs> Spirit levels, dear. I can't be bothered with all of that. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Jeffrey Daniels from Shalimar. Was he the host of that Soul Train on Channel 4 Colours? Some years ago that was now, wasn't it? Good morning to Paul and Lou. Have you missed the raffle tickets? No, we're about to do those, Paul and Lou. Okay. Um, uh, there's a song called Love Train, Alex sings. Is it the song, Ray? People on the world join hands. It's a love train, love train. Da, 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 da. Now, who did that? Is it the Isley Brothers? Love Train. I think it might be the Isley Brothers. Someone tell me. Someone tell me. Adrian, in Carry On Up the Kyber, they talk, used to talk about Tiffany a lot. Wink, wink, lud, lud. Did they? Have you done Tiffany? 
There's Rachel welcoming everyone there. Welcoming everyone. Thank you, Rachel. She spreads the word, don't you, Rachel? Rachel's got her, got her fridge magnet. Shania's got her fridge magnet as well. Everything has arrived today. And we sent one off to Germany yesterday. Uh, that was one of our winners. That was the first winner of the raffle, Germany. Um, Stuart, Stuart Skinner, wasn't it? Stuart Skinner, yours went in the post yesterday. Had to pay extra for yours going to Germany. In future, I might request people to come over here and collect their own bleeding things. All right? Yeah, LaBelle, exactly about the chips. Chips and fries mean a different thing here and there. Okay. Oh, Ray, you never ran. I thought you actually ran in the uh, Olympics, no? Not ran in the Olympics, carrying that thing. What's it called? That flame thing. That, 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 you know, that thing. What's that called? I can't remember what that's called now. Morning to Joseph McDonald. Good morning to you. Uh, oh, yes, Fortnite is a game. I thought it was. Thank you. The OJs. It was. was the OJs. People on the world. Join. I love that song. I like, I like anything to do with trains, dear. I do love trains. The OJs. Thank you very much, Mike, Joseph. The OJs. Everyone's saying the OJs there. Goody two shoes. Goody two shoes. Um, oh, Dragon's Den. Anyone watch Dragon's Den yet? That's the other thing I watched. I had 10 more minutes of Dragon's Den to watch last night. Get ready. We're going to do the raffle tickets after this. Um, and right at the end of it, I couldn't believe it. There was this young couple on there, man and woman. And they were, I think they were newly married. <clears throat> anyway, so they were, it was a pet food thing was a pet food thing that they were trying to get to get backing from the dragons. And uh, one by one they went out and they were a nice enough couple. And Peter Jones uh, quite rightly said, well, what happens, you know, if the marriage goes wrong, what's going to happen to the business and these, this young couple? You know, how the, you know how it is when you're young and they're like, well, that's not going to happen to us. And Peter kind of didn't say anything else after that. But of course, you know, you never think it will. Do. I think as you get older, I think as you get older, you probably do think to yourself, what if this goes wrong? When you're young and you fall in love, you don't think anything is ever going to go wrong with it. <clears throat> you really don't. And then something happens and it's the end of the world, isn't it? Then it happens again. Then it happens again. And then after that, I think you kind of get a bit used to it. And you think, and then, then you go into relationships after that first few young love type things with, with, with uh, you know, with, uh, I was going to say jubilation now, what's the word? With, um, with we're not quite sure what is going to happen. You know, oh, I've met this person. Do I think it will last? Oh, I don't know about that. Whereas when you're in young, where you're, when you're young, you think, oh, this is the one. We're together, for, we're together forever and ever too far. And then you're not. It's horrible, really, isn't it? Anyway, so he, that was going on. So one by one, these dragon dropped out. And as I say, it was some sort of pet food business that they were trying to create. And they were asking for, I don't know, 50, 60 grand. Everyone's dropped out. And then Deborah Meaden is left on her own. I think they were asking to give away 10% of their company for £50,000 or £60,000, something like that. Anyway, the, the other dragons, none of them were really nasty. They just didn't think it had a go in it. You know, they were going to have to spend a lot of time and a lot of money getting the thing going. Deborah Meaden comes along, and that's who they really wanted, Deborah Meaden, right? Who's my favourite one on there, to be honest. And the conversation's going backwards and forwards, and Deborah says, oh, I'm, I'm not sure, and they're going on at her, and she said, eventually she says, you're not going to let me go. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make you an offer. I'll offer you all the money for 20%. They'd ask for 10%, she's offered 20%. Now, bear in mind... She is the only dragon left now, okay? 10%, 20% of something like that, probably not much difference. Of course, if the company was to get massive, then 20% of £100 million is a lot more than 10% of £100 million. So maybe that was what was going through their mind. But anyway, she said, I'll say 20%, and they looked at each other, and I thought, yep, that's, that sounds reasonable to me. And then they said, can we go and talk at the wall? And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course you can, Deborah Meadham. And off they went to the back wall and they're having this little discussion, which you can't hear, you see. Um, and then they came back and they said, um, uh, can we ask you, if we get your money back to you within three years, would you, would you then drop to the 10% that we asked for in the first place? And Deborah's like, well... 
And she had a good think about it. Joker, she said, whoa. I, she's thinking and she's thinking. She, it wasn't a quick answer. She says, look, I'll tell you how it is. This, is. this is my thinking. So the three of us, we build up the business together with my money. And then you want to drop down to 10%. She said, how do you think that that sounds to me? Not just it sounds fantastic for you. But how do you think that sounds for me? And um, they had another little conversation. <clears throat> and he said, "Is it, can we do a compromise on that? And she says, well, <sighs> no, not this time. She said, I, th I think that's a very fair offer. And they turned her down. They turned her down. These two young people, you know, you got the dragon there. She's offered the money. She would, she, I mean, she must be fantastic to work with, I would imagine, Deborah Meadham, or any of them. As long as you're doing the job and you're doing it to the best ability, I reckon they'd be brilliant to work for, especially Deborah Meadham. And they turned her down. And I was gobsmacked, <laughs> as well as the other dragons. They were looking at each other. Peter Jones was shaking his head like that. And they left with nothing. They had the offer there. Well, that's just mad. Either they're completely stupid or greedy. One of the two. You know. Couldn't believe it. Did anyone see that? Anyway, Dragon's Den, BBC Two Colour. Eight o'clock, I think it is, on Sunday nights. Or, of course, that episode and uh, the episodes that are coming on uh, will be on the BBC iPlayer colour all right so a great great thing yeah weird cities is saying there 20 percent of something is better than 90 percent of nothing which is exactly what they've got they'll never be able to build that up on their own i wouldn't imagine never you need someone like that and it they're worth the, if you get the right price they're probably worth their weight in gold having a dragon on board you know and just imagine the millions and billions of viewers I'd have all over the world. If I could say a very good morning to you. Welcome to this morning's United Kingdom talk, uh, sponsored by Peter Jones. And I could have posters of me up everywhere in this business. <laughs> because I'll be quite honest with you, I don't think the raffle tickets are going to be doing it. <laughs> all right. Okie doke, boys and girls. It's raffle ticket time. If you're new to the show, welcome along. We're running a raffle at the moment each and every week. The raffle is held on Monday morning live on the show. We've got some fridge magnets to give away. Nice little fridge magnets. I don't have one with me, unfortunately. Foolishly, I didn't bring one up here. They're, um, uh, they've got the United Kingdom Talk logo on. On a yellow background, it says, I listen to Chris Reardon's United Kingdom talk. That's all they are. They're la on a large size, about, about about three inches by an inch, I think. Something like two and a half inches by an inch. Uh, but you'll need a raffle ticket, OK? If you're watching the show now, you may now ask for a raffle ticket. I'll write your name on the back of the raffle ticket, and I'll give you the number. Write your number down, although you don't need to really remember it, because I've got them all here, OK? If you're watching a recording of the show, uh, oh, hang on, there's a text thing on. Yeah, it is on. If you're watching a recording of the show, boys and girls, uh, then you can apply by email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Don't use several methods to get several raffle tickets at the same time, because I'll bar you completely if I catch you doing that. And it's quite easy to catch someone doing that, so please don't do that. We just want to be fair to everyone, so everyone has the same chance, OK? But you can, if you're watching a recording of the show, apply for a raffle ticket right up to the start of the next show. And the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Or you can text in on the text number there. Oh, gosh. One minute. Oh, God's sake. Oh, my God, blimey. One minute. Everything's fallen down now. Oh, no. Not my caravan. One minute. There it is. Aha. A little caravan there, darling. As supplied to me by one of our kind listeners. Right, there we are. So it's time to give out these raffle tickets. Who wants one? Let's have a look. Who's first? There we go. Adrian Richardson has been good this week. He has. Adrian, ticket number 72. Adrian Richardson. Don't forget, you can have one every day, OK? Every day. What time do we do the raffle? It varies. It varies, OK? Adrian Richardson, number 72. Paul and Lou, 
Number 73. Michael, uh, oh, Joseph McDonald. Number 74. Michael Lawrence, number 75. All right, so we got Adam the Plumber, number 76. <coughs> I must get down that swimming pool today, dear. Right, I've got a few stories for you after this. Some lovely stories, actually, I've got for you. Uh, Adam, was that Adam? Diane Jeb, good morning. Number 77. Diane Jeb, 77 for Diane. Baby Diane, yeah. Uh, Weird City Citizen, number 78. Weird... Seventy eight for Weird City. Uh Mike Responto at seventy-nine. Uh Glenda, hello. Good morning, Glenda. Glenda's there on YouTube. Morning, Glenda. Glenda gets number eighty. Glenda S number eighty. Okay, make sure you're with us for the raffle on Monday mornings, okay? At which point I'll ask you to either email or um, uh, uh, Facebook private, pri must be private, message me your address if you win, okay? Who was last? Glenda. Good morning to Gary Butler, my nephew. Morning, Gary. You see, no favouritisms, not even family. You have to ask for a ticket. You've got to ask for a ticket. Don't come up, don't embarrass yourselves. Or oh, any chance of one of those freak magnets? No! Got to do the raffle, the same as everyone else did. Thank you. Rachel is there. Get yourself sorted, Matt. <laughs> I am sorted. Don't worry. I'm sorted. Now, look at Rachel. She's been very good. She's got one already, so she's not asking for another one. That is thinking about other people. How kind. Russ Philip Vernon. All right, Russ. Russ Philip Vernon. He got one from by email for the last show, but he's with us live this morning. Thank you, Russ. Uh, Gaz. Oh, good morning, Gaz. Gaz Barron, there you go, Gaz Barron, he had one yesterday. Morning, Gaz, he's up in Cleethorpes. Today's ticket for you, Gaz, is number 83, okay? Anyone else want a raffle ticket? Apply nice and quickly, boys and girls. We're up to, what are we up to now, number 83? Gosh, and here they are. This is today's tickets, and yesterday's tickets all in here, building up nicely for the big raffle on Monday morning, only here live on United Kingdom Tour. Anyone else want raffle tickets nice and quickly? Or if you're watching a recording of the show, email your request, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. No one texting in this one. There's a text number up there, 07551 259 675, if you can't uh, go to a, um, uh, a computer and type in your bits and pieces there. All right. Uh, what was the year you were born? What was the year you were born? You got what? Uh, oh, I I think you might be watching back a little bit. Are you? Was it nineteen? Oh, what year were you born, Gaz? I'm gonna guess nineteen seventy-eight. Is that a good guess? When? What year were you bound? Born? But bound? Born? Bound? Bound? But some people like to be bound, you know. Strange and mysterious people. Okay, some uh, stories for you this morning. Um, <clears throat> I was just talking to you about Burger King. In the Metro this morning, that's kind of a London uh, paper. I mean, a shock horror. Shock horror. Oh, you were born in 1983, Gaz, were you? Gosh. Gaz, blimey. Oh, Rachel, you can't ask for tickets for someone else, I'm afraid, darling. They have to ask themselves. All right, my love? It's a little rule, dear. Little rule. Just a tiny little rule. People must ask for their own raffle tickets. You can't ask for someone else, darling. Adrian's going to the gym now. Have a nice time. Your cat is not going to have a raffle ticket, Adrian. What is your cat going to do with a fridge magnet? Huh? Unless your cat has got a metal skull or something like that you can stick it to, then you won't require a fridge magnet for your cat, will you? Dear me, honestly. Um, yes, uh, McDonald's news. McDonald's, uh, shock horror. Shock horror. A vegan man. Oh, it's terrible. A vegan, poor vegan man, a vegan man took a bite of a chicken wrap after he was mistakenly sold it by McDonald's. Shock horror. Oh, God. Jack McMillan, 26. Oh, he's at that age, isn't he? 
Oh, oh, I was, I was, I'm offended by that dick rapper. Just give it back. Get another one. Stop moaning. Don't you been writing to the paper about this? You know. Maybe tomorrow I might buy a packet of Walker's crisps, open them and they're stale. Shall I write to the papers about that? No, just send them back and they'll send you another one. Be done with it. Anyway, this bloke is written to the paper. Jack McMillan, 26, bought the rap on the way home after playing piano at a wedding just after midnight on August the 11th. His receipt shows he ordered a spicy veggie one wrap at the Festival Leisure Centre drive through near Basildon. Oh, I've worked there at Basildon. A place called Colours. Oh, it was dreadful. Awful place. One of the worst jobs I've ever done. It was horrendous. It was a shame, really, because the manager there I quite liked. Got on with the manager and all that. I just hated it. I did. I think I bid about six there, and then I quit. Hated it. I'd get to this place. It was called Colours in Basildon. You'd go up these stairs and you get in there. It was like a school hall, big stage at the end. Get in there and I'd be booked from nine till three. So I start at nine, right? So there I am. And it was cold in it. Oh, my God, it was so cold in there. Really cold. And I'd start playing nine o'clock. At about 11.30, people would start wandering in. Why on earth it was open at nine, I don't know. People start wandering in about half eleven. And this was just after they'd stopped smoking in pubs and bars, you see. And by about, I don't know, quarter past twelve, you might have a little group of people. It was never busy. Never, ever busy. You might have a little group of people dancing in the middle of the dance floor. And then one person would decide to go for a cigarette and then you'd lose everyone again. It was an absolute nightmare. And it was till three in the morning. I was so tired at the end of it. I'd quit eventually. Oh, God, did I hate that job. Anyway, it's one of those things. Uh, so he's, he's been to Basildon. It arrived containing meat. He took a bite before he realised and immediately spat it out. Oh. <laughs> I've been vegan for about six years now and I was distraught. Oh, isn't it pathetic? Pathetic people. I can't bear it, dear. I can't bear these levels of patheticness coming from younger people these days. 26 is... Don't you think you would have grown up at 26? I would have gone straight back to the counter. Hello, mate. Uh, I asked for a veggie deluxe. You've given me a chicken. Oh, OK, we'll change it. No problem. Where's the problem? I bet they don't even ask you for the receipt. They just swap it over. No, nope, you've got to write to the paper. Oh, I was distraught, Jack told the Metro. I took a bite and had a big bit of chicken in it. I did complain and they apologised and gave me £10 back. But I don't think this is the first time it has happened. Well, probably not, you miserable old git. Or young git. Oh, you are pathetic. He added, I think McDonald's and similar companies offering these options need to get their act together. If you're not competent enough to train the staff to realise that the spicy veggie one should not contain chicken gourdrons, then stop serving the options. He said he always buys vegan products to send the message that veganism is the future and I want to see it proliferate as much as possible in my life. Yeah, me too. Me too, mate. I don't need to go writing to the papers that McDonald's has accidentally sold you the wrong thing, dear. Be grateful you're not allergic to chicken, because you'd be dead now. Like those people that eat oat the, um, what was it? That Was it um, some sandwich something? Someone Didn't someone die because it had peanuts or something in it? I mean, it could have been worse. Stop moaning. It's just an accident, dear. I also don't think this is unrealistic in a capitalist society. Flora recently removed all the animal products from their margarine and went 100% vegan. Yeah, good on them. Fantastic news. A McDonald's spokesman said in the email to chat, I can only imagine how this has made me you feel. Please accept my sincere apologies. And I've got to tell you, you know, if I ate something that had a bit of dead chicken or a dead cow or dead lamb in it, I, I, I would be, oh, God. You know, imagine doing it. And I'd take it straight. Look, you've told me the wrong bloody thing. I might have a moan there. Certainly wouldn't bother writing to the blooming paper. Christ, you must have a lot of time on your hands, mate. Have you got a proper job, maybe? Maybe you don't have a job, you know. You wake up in the morning, play a couple of computer games. Oh, I just write to McDonald's now about the incorrect sandwich sold me yesterday. Um, <clears throat> McDonald's says we do place a great emphasis on order accuracy as there is a growing demand for personal preference. So there certainly is now, isn't there? I mean, I remember, uh, I think when McDonald's first opened, um, 
the menu was there and that's what you had. Uh, for example, the Big Mac would contain certain things like the ever unwanted gherkin on the top. Who eats that bloody gherkin, dear? No one. No one eats it. And can I have it without the gherkin? No, I'm sorry, that's how it comes. That's how it used to be. And over time, that's got better. I think it was Burger King on the fast food people that first started saying, we make it how you want it. So then you could go in and say, well, I'll just have a plain burger, no mayonnaise, no lettuce. I mean, what, what is lettuce? What does that do? Nothing. What does lettuce actually contribute to your health? Probably nothing at all. But nevertheless, so you could go in there and ask exactly what you want. Uh, McDonald's, on the other hand, it was up there. Up above, I remember it back in the um, 80s, early 80s. And, you know, you ordered a Big Mac and that's how it was. You couldn't say, I don't want the mayonnaise on the top. That's how it came. Want it? Scrape it off somewhere. Now they all do it to order. But now and again, they're going to get something wrong, aren't they? They really are. Um, uh, let's have a look at... Uh, uh, Rachel loves gherkins. Oh, you don't, do you? Oh, no vile things, Rachel. No, so well, no, Rachel, could you put your new address up there and everyone on here will in future happily send you their gherkins in a small plastic bag. <laughs> through the envelope. Uh, Paul and Lou, did you see other snowflakes have banned burgers on sites at Goldsmith College because of climate change? Have they really? Oh, well, they're these blooming universities and things like that. I don't have the time for universities. Blooming well. There's actually a university story here, funnily enough, um, that I came across today in the Daily Mail Online. Paul and Lou loves gherkins as well. Yeah, in the Daily Mail Online this morning, universities have been criticised for offering dozens of Mickey Mouse degrees to pupils who underachieve in their A-levels uh, this week. Now, uh, when I was at the school, I went to a school, I went to the London Oratory School in Fulham. Great school, great headmaster, Mr McIntosh. Um, I was involved in the music department there. Uh, I used to play the drums and sing. Uh, I didn't do very well at school at all. I wasn't academic. I ended up with two O-levels at both C grades. One in physics, one in English, that's it. I do not class myself as intelligent, okay? Never have done. Um, there are very, very intelligent people that used to come through that school. And uh, we were all actually encouraged to go to university. I had no interest at all in doing any more learning other than on a job after I'd finished the school. So I came away from it. That's not to say that very clever people, I think, should be encouraged to go to university. If you've got one of those heads that absorbs information from books and tutors and university lecturers, then fine, go to university. You want to be a doctor? I don't know, a veterinary surgeon, a brain surgeon, uh, maybe space exploration or something technical? Then yes, go to university. For someone like me, that would have been a complete and utter waste of time. I stayed on at school into the sixth form. What did I achieve there? Absolutely nothing whatsoever. Why did I do it? Because I was scared to go out into the world and meet new people. I was terrified that I was going to leave this sort of cosy school where I was bored most of the time and then go out. I, I, I just didn't, I couldn't do it. But that, that year was a complete waste of my life, that extra year at school. Right? It was Tony Blair that said everyone should go to university. I, I completely and totally disagree with that. There are people now that go to university for several years, end up with an enormous debt and achieve absolutely nothing because they don't have the head for it. They're the same as me. Not everyone has the head to, to, to gain lots of intelligence. Well, uh, that doesn't stop the universities trying to hold on to them and get the money in, dear. It's a blooming business now, isn't it? It's not about education. It's about business. It says students who miss the grades needed for their original choices when their results come out tomorrow can opt for others with lower entry levels via clearing. Well, what's the point of that? Such courses on offer include football business, golf management, children. These are, these are degrees. You can get a degree in children's books, wine business, makeup and hair design. See... <clears throat> when I see things like makeup and hair design, stuff like that, surely you do better learning it on the job. You go into a hairdresser's, you know, this person who's been there for like 200 years, then teaches you how to do the job. Not some book that you've opened up. 
I don't get it. It's just a complete waste of time. Most charge full fees of £9,250 a year, meaning students can accumulate close to £30,000 of debt for tuition costs alone. Admission Services UCAS is currently advertising 98 football-related courses, 45 makeup courses and 19 golf-related courses on its clearing website. Critics have questioned the usefulness of such degrees and the motivation behind offering glamorous sounding courses to those with A-level grades. Uh, and, and the story goes. I mean, it's just a, it's a stupid. And it goes on there. Too often, some of these courses will leave them underemployed or unemployed, also burdened with massive debts that they will be unable to pay off. It says in the Daily Mail, admissions tutors are ripping off our kids to the line to line the pockets of universities. Absolutely they are. A degree in football business is on offer at the University of Bedfordshire for £9,250 a year to students with CDD grade. I don't know what, even what that is. I don't know what that is. But it just seems a complete and utter waste of time Ask going for these um, uh, various degrees and that. Dreadful, dreadful. Uh, Paul and his search Goldsmith's Burger. You'll have a laugh. I think I've seen the story, actually. I have seen the story there, Paul, and know about the uh, uh, the burgers that they've banned. Dear me. Um, <clears throat> OK, so we've done the raffle tickets for today. All right. There'll be another load tomorrow, starting with number 84. Unless, of course, uh, we'll probably have a few people email in for a raffle ticket as well, you know, after the show is finished. Good. Uh, Mike, when, I, when you drew the raffle on Monday, uh, you played a bit of music. What was it and where can I get a copy from it? It was when the wasp came in out the window. Oh, I don't know, Mike. You'll have to ask me again on Monday, OK? I don't have the music here that I have back at uh, uh, back at, uh, in, in Berkshire, unfortunately. All right? Weird City, can I do a, a degree in McDonald's? I'm sure you can. Maybe you'll be able to round out the correct burgers then and not offend accidentally vegans, you know? Oh, my God, I've just had a bit of chicken. I'm going to die. No, you won't. You'll probably be upset about it, but no need to write to the paper. Just take it back and be done with it. Stop moaning all the time. And they moan and they moan and they moan, don't they? <laughs> Dear me. One more story for you today, then. You'll love this one. Doctors have removed... Again, it's in the Metro again this morning. Doctors have removed something from a patient. Check this out. I mean, how does this happen? You ready? Doctors have removed at least 430 metal objects including now clippers from inside a patient's stomach. Why would you eat a set of now clippers? How strange. The 28-year-old patient went to a hospital in India complaining of stomach pains. Medics first removed a foreign object from his respiratory tract, that's the breathing owl, <gasps> yep, uh, but performed an x-ray when he complained of further pain. An x-ray showed a cluster of foreign substances inside his stomach and then decided to open him up. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Prambakar from the city of Ahmedabad said doctors eventually removed nuts, bolts, coins, hair clippers and even nail clippers. <laughs> the hardware weighed almost a stone in total for our American friends. That's about 14 pounds of metal objects. <clears throat> the medic added... He's not a normal person has been suffering from mental illness. So it's possible that he consumes metal objects frequently. Oh, just imagine the damage that we've I mean, I've, we, we've seen, I've heard stories, re not recently, in the past, people who swallow accidentally like a pin. Can you imagine the damage that must do on the way down? Or even worse than that, on the way out. Oh, it's Kelly Kim. Oh, I love Kelly Kim. Kelly Kim, I've got to tell you, Kelly Kim, uh, I've got to tell you, people, Kelly Kim is one of the most beautiful people in the world. Not just looks. She's beautiful in looks and her personality as well. She absolutely, you love that, didn't you, Kelly Kim? Did you love that? That's what I think about you. Honestly, I'll always be honest what I think about people, dear. Well, I think so anyway. <laughs> Kelly's got a huge university student debt. Uh, they take £50 a month off my paycheck and charge £50 interest. They even have to pay interest on those loans. Christ. I went to two universities, one for acting 
and one for teaching. If you earn less than £21,000 a year, you never pay it back to the government, but the interest will keep going up. You see, it's just so wrong, isn't it? Kelly, I think in your case, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it was probably worth you going to university. But, Kelly Kim, you must also know people, know people that have been to university, and even when they told you they were going, you think, well, that's going to be a waste of time. Probably not for you, because I know what uh, uh, your teaching job and all that. Uh, presumably, you had to go to university to do that, did you? Eh? But there are people, and it would have been a complete waste of time for me. What could I have done in university? You know, perhaps I should have taken up DIY. Because <laughs> I might be able to get things on the wall then. <laughs> oh, I'm just no good. Let's just go back to this story. Uh, it says uh, he's not a normal person. It's possible he consumes metal objects frequently. The patient has responded well to the treatment post-surgery and remains in hospital. There have been several similar incidents across India with an, maybe it's a, a religion eating metal objects. So you get to me, would it? I mean, I wonder how the vegan would have felt if he'd eaten a metal object instead of that piece of chicken accidentally from McDonald's. On July the 24th in West Bengal, a 26-year-old woman had three pounds of gold jewelry remo removed from her stomach. On the 16th of July, doctors uh, removed 30 solid objects, including razor blades and screwdrivers, from a man's stomach. His mother told doctors that her 30-year-old son would grab anything and eat it. Oh, my Lord, gold. Well, I think I know what I'm going to have for lunch now. I think I might have nails on toast today. Nails on toast. Or I could have a, a pot. <laughs> pot needles. Pot needles. Well done, Rachel said they're probably into heavy metal. <laughs> Excellent, Rachel. Excellent. All righty, gang. Uh, we'll do today's birthdays. I'm going to do yesterday's birthdays as well today uh, because, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't do a show yesterday. Uh, happy birthday on this Wednesday. It's Wednesday, isn't it? Wednesday the 14th of August 2019 to Lola Roxes. Good morning, Lola. She was a showgirl. Good morning, Lola. 26 years old today. Kieran Knight. Good morning, Kieran. Star of films, aren't you, my darling? 31 years old tonight. I came across one of your films accidentally the other night, actually, while I was watching a little bit of fun. So good morning to you, Kieran. 31 years old today. Uh, Stefan. Hello, Stefan Hunt. He used to come to the karaoke, uh, which was at Dulwich. What was the name of the place? Ooh, Dulwich. The Cherry Tree in Dulwich. Morning, Stefan. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Sasha Smith today is 31 years old. Andrew Malone. Good morning, Andrew. 48 years old today. I haven't seen you for a few months, sir, so I hope you're doing well, Andrew. Uh, Scotty O. Westwood. La young Scotty. 31 today. Happy birthday, Scotty. Uh, Peter Zane, Ryo, uh, oh, hey, oh, oh, H key, a uh, hucky. I think that's how you say that. Oh, hucky, O oh, H K I, O oh, hucky. I'm just guessing that. I hope that's right, Peter. Happy birthday. Uh, Lisa McDowell, 50 years old today. Good morning, Lisa. Uh, Ushia, Ushia Santos, who I worked with at Belushi's in Hammersmith and Fulham. Happy birthday, Ushia, and maybe Camden as well. I think you might be in Camden as well. Happy birthday, Ushia. Carl Clinton today is a young 32 years old. That's a good age, Carl. Happy birthday to Carl. Uh, Jason Benny today on this Wednesday is 45 years old. They're the birthdays today. Uh, and the birthdays for Tuesday yesterday, which we couldn't do. Happy birthday on Tuesday, the 13th of August, to Dave Bunce. He does karaoke. He's 50, 53 years old yesterday. Happy birthday, Dave. Uh, uh, Dave. James Pico yesterday was 56 years old. Ringo Ringo. Ah, Ringo Ringo. It says 36. Happy birthday yesterday, 36 years old. Rob Henry yesterday was 55 years old yesterday. Madeleine Is Isbitsky was 69 years old yesterday. Rob McKenzie. Morning, Rob. Happy birthday to you for yesterday. Sally Webster's birthday yesterday. Rob Henry yesterday was 55 years old. Young Scott Prince, a young 38 years old yesterday. Oh, we've got a lot here, haven't we? Emma Jane Butler. Good morning, Emma Jane. Happy birthday for yesterday. Terry Harvey. Lovely Terry, who I worked with uh, at the Black Cap. Lovely chap. He dresses well as well. Beautiful suits he's got. Happy birthday for yesterday, Terry. Uh, good morning, Mark Flynn. 45 years old yesterday. 
and Martin Donkin. Good morning, Martin. Not Duncan, dear. Nothing to do with the donuts. Martin Donkin's birthday yesterday as well. So happy birthday, boys and girls. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. There you are. Happy birthday, gang. Uh, Paul and Lou says, don't surgeons leave things inside of after operations too? Yes, indeed, they do sometimes. Accidentally, I don't suppose they'd shove a couple of you know, screwdrivers and nail clippers in there somehow. Probably more like an old rag that they used to soak up the blood with. Good morning to Dr. SRS Grigorian. You're a bit late, mate. Bit late, dear. We're about to finish now. Dear me. Uh, oh, the cricket's on at 11 o'clock. Oh, that's where Claire is this morning. She's getting ready to cricket. She's usually here in the morning. No Claire today. Okay, Jones Janes likes pot noodles. Do you like pot noodles? I'm going to have a, a, a nail clipper pot noodle for dinner. <laughs> All right, well, the new router seems to have held up nicely, doesn't it? Let's hope it's the same uh, on the next show. Thanks ever so much for joining me uh, on the show on this Wednesday. Uh, weather's not looking particularly good at the moment, but uh, you never know. We might, we might get surprised by an extra bit of sunshine or something like that. Enjoy your Wednesday, and I'll see you again, uh, hopefully, at some time tomorrow. Maybe around about the same time, I suppose, about half past nine uh, tomorrow morning. Bye-bye now.